Hello friends. Welcome back to the S3 Cloud Hub channel. In this video we will talk about AWS OpsWorks. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. So what is AWS OPS Works? OpsWorks is a configuration management platform. So what that means is that, we have assets that we want to deploy our application on, and they will consist of instances. Maybe EC2 instances. They could consist of elastic load balancers a number of things. And the way that those assets or those resources and instances are configured, we need to define, and that is done with OpWorks and code. So this provides us much more control over infrastructure, design, and management that we would get with Elastic Beanstalk. And we use Chef, we use Chef recipes, and they enable us to have that infrastructure designed as code, and gives us very fine-grained control over our infrastructure. Now OpsWorks it consists as a configuration management model, and it's based upon stacks, layers, and recipes which we'll go through right now. So a stack. That is the top-level OpsWorks entity, and it represents a set of instances and applications, that you want to manage collectively, so that could be a web server, it could be an enterprise resource planning application. So it's a set of instances and applications for that, that are managed collectively, so for example if we had a web server stack, that may contain a load balancer, server instances, and a database. So within a stack we have layers, and those layers define how to set up, and configure instances and resources. And you can mix and match these layers, so a layer can be used in multiple stacks, and a stack can be made up of one layer, or can be made up of multiple layers, but a stack must contain at least one layer, and layers they must contain at least one instance. Now these instances can also be a member of multiple layers, so you can reuse instances, you can better utilize them across multiple layers. And the applications will there the code that will run on your server, so if it's a node, JS server, that will be your node, JS application code and that will run on your Node.js server, if that is what you are setting up with OpsWorks. Now scaling. So we have three different types of scaling, that we can use lies with OpsWorks. So you can have 24-7 instances, and they can be added to a layer, and you can mentally start or stop or reboot those corresponding EC2 instances that have been defined. And we also have automatic scaling, so that can be on a time-based or low base. So it would be time-based if it's based upon a schedule, so between 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock o'clock at night we're going to have X capacity. We could be load-based, so that would be based upon a load metrics a network traffic or CPU utilization, so when demand is high that would scale up. So an effective strategy would be to use all three different types of scaling, so you would have for your baseline capacity, you would have a 24 to 7 instance, and then for automatic scaling for your peak periods, you could have a time-based instance based upon a schedule, and you could also have a load-based instances that would react to network traffic or CPU utilization to take advantage to look after that you didn't expect and you need excess capacity that you didn't have. So then once we've got those layers, we've got our stack, we can then look at deployment and customizations. So our app and its associated infrastructure that is needed for that app to run will be deployed automatically through OpsWorks, and our chef recipes they define our infrastructure as code. So we can use a chef recipes to further customize, we can use those chef recipes to redeploy our environment again. We can also use those chef recipes under version control, so we can not only have our infrastructure as code, we can have it manage our infrastructure managed under version control, and we can also reuse our code, so that's a very big difference between what you would have with Elastic Beanstalk. So less expense talk just looks after deploying your application to resources. So this looks but a lot more advanced, and a lot more fine-grained and far more integrated with, with the infrastructure. Now let's start by creating an OpsWorks stack, and launching an application on top of that. So when you first start, you get this welcome to AWS OpsWorks screen, so we can launch a sample stack. So let's go over here, add your first stack. So it's going to use the sample stack. Here we're not going to do our own cookbooks or anything like that, so just select Linux, and create the stack. So that will go through create the stack. It will set up the cookbook, and the recipes in that repository, and it will create the layer, and instance to that layer. So that's all done. So there we go, so we've now made this stack. Here it's got a Node.js app server on there as a layer. And we've got our instance here, so there is one instance but it's stopped, and we have an application there. 
so I'm just going to have a look at this application first. So this is the application that's going to be running on the infrastructure that we have defined using a chef recipe. And you can see here it's pulling it in from a GitHub repository. So if I just go have a look at that GitHub repository and have a look and see what's in there. Okay, so that looks just like any ordinary Node.js application. So just have a look in here. So it's an express Node.js application that developers would certainly recognize. So that is the application Node.js application that is going to be launched on this infrastructure. So we'll just go back to our stack. And I'm going to start up these instances. So here let's click on start button. And that will go through and do its usual boot up and health checks and whatever that a EC2 instance does it take some time. So let's go to stack again. And what we can have a look at is a layer. So here is our layer, which has got one instance inside it. It has recipes there, it has some EBS volumes. So let's have a look at the recipes. So there we can see, there's a Node.js demo recipe that is used for deployment. And that is located in an Amazon S3 bucket there. So there are two repositories there. One for our infrastructure as code. And the other one for our actual application that we're going to run on that infrastructure. So here in instance. Now you can see the status is now online. So we have our instance up and running there. So we can see it's being assigned a public IP. So now let's go back to apps. And there is our Node.js sample app that was located in that GitHub repository. So we're going to deploy that to that infrastructure. So let's click on deploy. So that should be running now. And what I'm going to do is go back to that instance. I'm going to go to this public IP. So OPS Works has created the infrastructure that we require. It's used a chef recipe to do that. A chef recipe has defined all of the infrastructure as code. It has deployed all of that infrastructure, and then subsequently it has deployed our Node.js application from a GitHub repository. So there you can see that is the, the application that within that GitHub repository that's been launched on a Node.js server. So a lot more powerful than Elastic Beanstalk, or EC2 container service, and certainly if you're going to be looking at really advanced. This is probably the high end of the deployment options on AWS. So that we don't actually get a nasty bill at the end of the month for all these services that we're not going to be using. So we're just going to delete this stack and all the associated resources. So first let's stop this instance. Then after it's stopped, we need to delete our instance. We also need to delete the application as well. So let's go and delete it. And we just need to wait for the instance to be stopped. Okay, now we can delete it. So let's go and delete it also. So once that's deleted, then we can go back into our stack. And we can delete the stack once the instance has been deleted. So we just delete that. And that's done. I hope you all understand the concept. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, Feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.